Hi, my name is Vinay and uh, in this video we will see through an experiment named as arithmetic and logical unit. <clears throat> so here uh, we have written a simple code using Verilog language and uh, here we have allowed the user to be configurable uh, widths of the input bus. <clears throat> so here I have used in parameter as a word 32. So if you set the width as 32, so it will become a 32-bit ALU. If you change the width, then obviously the ALU uh, size will change accordingly. Okay, so there it is. Now uh, I'm using a Xilinx IC software to implement this experiment on an FPGA platform, which is a Spartan 3, which is a 90 nanometer fabricated technology fabricated FPGA from Xilinx. Okay. So the first we can see is through the simulation. So if you set the IIC software in a simulation mode, so it will come to simulation. But he will start the behavioral simulation with the test bench. So if you select the test bench, here I've written a very simple basic test bench where I have, I have set the input A and B as the value 6 and 2. And I just vary the select lines from 0 to 15 so that I can see all the operation what is happening on this. Earlier I started with 8-bit, that's why you see all uh, narrations etc. for 8-bit, uh, later words I changed it to different ones, okay. <clears throat> so the operations I do on the ADU are addition, subtraction, multiplication, inversion of the input, logical shift, rotate, left, right, logical, all the operations like AND, OR, XOR, NOR, NAND, next NOR, even comparisons, okay. So let's see it. So I just double click on this simul simulate behavior model. So it will run iSIM simulator of Xilinx and it will open up in another window. So this is how it looks like. It more or less it is having interface like older software simulators like Modelsim. So I change the radix to unsigned decimal so that we can quickly identify what is happening. I zoom a little, go to the home location. So here we are. So here, uh, the select line is 0, so 6 and 2 were the inputs, so it is addition, so you see the result as 8. And uh, the second operation that is 1, when the select line is 1, okay. So here the operation is subtraction, so 6 minus 2, it is 4. Then it is multiplication, okay, second uh, operand. <clears throat> so it is 6 into 2, it is 12. Then third one, it is inversion of input A. So what you see a big number over here, this is the inverted output. So if you change the radix back to binary, and maybe I'll zoom a little bit more. So here you see the two six, I mean one one zero is the six value. So these two are bits are inverted. The rest things are become one. So that's why I see a huge value. <coughs> and the rest of the so on. Uh, operations which have been performed on the inputs and here you can see the output. You can uh, take a printout of this and you can copy paste the result to your assignments. Okay, so this is how the simulator will work. Now for implementation, you can go back to implementation mode and select the, the top level model which is this one, okay, the main code. You can synthesize the code. <coughs> and it will take a couple of minutes to see that you can even open this design summary and here you can see that uh, the values are updated so here it will show you all the number of slices used the number of lookup table used out of how much available and he shows the percentage of license so it's hardly used around 20-25% of the uh, APG it's not that big enough okay now, uh, you can even see uh, the timing performance. So here you can see the maximum combination part delay is around 20 nanoseconds. Now, there are no clocks in the designs. That's why he says that he is not able to find any clock path. So, it's only the pad to pad delay, which is around 20.7 nanoseconds. Okay. Now, you can implement the design also, and you can see the further results. <coughs> So these are all old values, so post timing reports, so these are out of date, that's why. But now as he will implement on the back end of the FPGA, so these things will be updated.
So depending on your CPU performance and the kind of desktop processor you have, it will take a few minutes to do this. So after implementation, we can see the results like, okay, <clears throat> what are the actual utilization values and even the post this TAMI reports. Okay, so here he shows the delays in nanoseconds. Okay, so these are pad to pad delay. Out of them, we have to find out which is the worst one. So I see that somewhere around 22.02 that is the worst one. So in synthesis, he said that it will take around 20, but after the post placement, it is like 22.0, okay, 22.6. So this is the worst one as so far I see. Yeah. So he shows all the node delays. Yeah. Okay. So out of this, you can find out which is the worst one and you can list out in your report. Okay. Now you can, even if you want, you can uh, see the FPGA editor. So you can see the routed design. So you, there is an option in Xilinx. So there's view and edit the routed design, FPGA editor, after the place in route. So there what you see is the internal structure of the FPGA. So here you see the lookup table, the switch matrix, the CLBs of the design. So if you want to show this, you, you can ask him to show the switch boxes. So what you see, the gray, gray boxes, these are all switch boxes. Okay. You can ask him to show the routes. So this is how the routing has been made uh, in the FPGA. Red nets, these are not important because otherwise that will be too messy. You can ask me to show the pips and the pin wires if you want. Okay, there we are. So you can zoom in and you can see around that. Okay, uh, how the routing has been done. You can open any of the lookup table, double click on them, and you can see inside what is happening in the lookup table. Okay, so you can double click on the lookup table and he will show you the slice values and even what is inside the lookup table. So if you click on the info, the tab on the right, okay, so he will show you that okay what is the uh, the equation he has implemented okay so this is how it is in and if you want you can even change it so you can change the flow plan you can change the placement now for to show that uh, let me see that okay how the density so you can see that most of the design he has placed in the center okay so all the IOs have almost equivalent delays and I you can see that the the bottom left and the bottom side of the designs is not of that piece is not being used much so i will try to target towards that one okay and maybe i will use all the four corners just to show how it happens so if you want to do flow planning you have to go back in design i see and you have to see the flow plan area i o or logic and plan ahead so you have to execute this that Okay, he will ask you that I have to edit the constraint path, so you just say, okay, yes. So he might take a couple of minutes, so I just pause my recording for that time. So here on the bottom side, it opens up. So there we have, so I just say that we close this. Flow planning is in very uh, intricate and detailed work to be done on that PJ. So I'll just show you the overview of it and obviously the plan ahead which is the software name of the Xilinx which helps you improve planning the design on the FPGA and uh, there is a user manual he says and you can help uh, take help of this manual to learn about more on flow planning. So this is how it looks so you can ask him that okay you want to do a flow planning or IO planning or accordingly what you want to do okay so you, you if you say only IO planning so he shows you all the IO map and you can select the primitives the input outputs and you can place it for example I can just say that okay place this somewhere for year so I just use the bottom ones okay so just to see that okay does that happens or not so I just drag drop and click it over there somewhere and I just put the random numbers to the random location and so he he will place it which IOs are freely available which are already been occupied and used so he will not place it for example I have used only this one uh, 113 so he's not allowing me to place it on this but if I go somewhere on the left so these are available so I place it on this and then I place somewhere on the bottom side couple of them 
just to show you that okay this 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 works okay now if you say that you want to do a flow planning of the area so these are the primitives okay so you can select any other primitive for example yeah somewhere this uh, carry ones so so this is a totally a constraint so you can ask him to put somewhere on the right okay and somewhere over here so you drag, drag drop each and every part of the logic okay so all these are temporary carry signals okay I can you can select all of them also and you can place on the right hand side so he's placing them all the instances ouch oh, it's crashed I'm sorry so let me see if I can try again okay unfortunately it looks like I have pressed stress too much on my planet so it crashed so I just place some buffers again and some couple of them on the bottom couple of them on the left and couple of them on the right then I ask him to do the flow planning so you need to know that okay you can see the schematic also of the entire design or you can just look for the primitives which you want to uh, place it so this is a big one I place on the right okay and maybe somewhere over there that's it okay so I just save the file and close it so if you want to see the effect of it what happens exactly okay so you can select the UCF file and click on the edit constraint so you should see whatever the changes are there all the instances which they have which should be placed on which IOs or the slices uh, so those constraints have been added in the text file okay the plan is just a GUI based interface so you can just run it again I just pause it till the time it happens so here the place and route is being complete so we, I, we can just see the open the place and route and click view edit route to design in our PG editor and there you go so here he has used these two aisles okay and the bottom one this area has also been utilized as compared to Pema. So you can see the design is shifted towards a little bit on the bottom side as compared it was on the centric part earlier. So this is how the you can make an impact of the flow planning and change in place and route of the app PC design. Now let's see is there any impact on the time reports. Okay, so we can just see the designing uh, summary. And let's see the post route timing report more or less the delays are almost kind of same in the range of 20s but less on 20s more less than 20s because earlier many of the signals were about 20 but now I see that most of them are below 20 so it looks like we have done better placement here yeah. okay and uh, design summary is on the top yeah so rest of the reports if you want you can see through here from the design summary so you should get most of the design reports from here you can even see the power reports so for example if you want to generate a text power report you can generate it from here and he will give you an estimated power consumption of the design so like uh, around 27.34 this is static power dissipation okay this is he showing for static power dynamic power is missing because you have to tell the software that what are your I oscillations you tell him that at what rate the signals comes to the RPG so that according to the number of oscillations happening inside the RPG he will compute the dynamic power consumption for you as of now he just shows you the static power dissipation okay so this is about N32 bit ALU implemented on a Xilinx app using a Xilinx ICC software. Thank you.